information. Chief Directors here and from my ministry, heads of agencies and other directors, our dear friends cherished from the media, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. I stand here today to apprise the citizenry on the strides made by the Ministry of Sanitation and Water Resources over the period since our last meeting. The issues to discuss, as we all heard from the Honorable Minister, are as follows. To improve access to potable water, to end open defecation, to safeguard Ghana's water resources for current and future generations, and finally, to improve the management of solid and liquid waste. And this is all to improve the overall sanitation and hygiene in our country. On, on water resources management, the achievement of the much expected socioeconomic development leading to the fulfillment of our basic human needs is essential. Uh, essentially dependent on the sustainable management of our water resources. With respect to the renewable fresh uh, water resources, the country is endowed with an estimated 53.2 billion cubic meters of water, of natural fresh water resources, out of which only 14% is being currently utilized. Groundwater is also available in various geological locations. However, the water resources are not in a healthy state due to human activities. At the end of 2016, 65% of the 16 major river basins were of poor water quality. Water quality indices of less than 50 as a result of illegal mining, known locally as Galamse. Between 2017 and 2019, an initiative was implemented and this led to a significant improvement in water quality. The overall ambient water quality improved from an index of 51.5 in 2017 to 55.9 in 2018 and 57.8, which is fairly good quality at the end of 2019. Nevertheless, the overall ambient water quality reduced to 56.6 .6 at the end of 2020. Indeed, by the close of February 2021, the quality of the major water bodies of the southwestern river system, mainly the Pra and Cobra of Feng, Brim, Tano, and Bia, showed levels of serious deterioration. Monitoring of turbidity levels started by Water Resources Commission. Government in early May 2021 reactivated the earlier action to check illegal mining in our water bodies and forest reserves. The results showed gradual improvements in the ambient water quality of water bodies, especially the southwestern river basins. For instance, the Pra River at Chufupraso, with a turbidity value of 1,157 at the end of February 2021, reduced to 848 at the end of the first week of June 2021. There is also tree planting efforts to make sure that we green the buffer zones to protect our water uh, bodies. In response to the degradation along river banks, buffer zone restoration schemes have been initiated in selected communities within the Black Volta, White Volta, Tano, Ofeng, and Densu basins with activities including procurement of equipment, training of nursery attendants, raising and nursing of seedlings, and planting of tree seedlings. So we do welcome the Greening Ghana initiative from my colleague, the Minister for Lands and Natural Resources. We also uh, planted some trees and we are going to make sure they grow into big, big trees to protect the environment. With urban water management and supply, government is committed to meeting the universal water coverage by 2030 in line with the Sustainable Development Goal 6. This commitment has been stated in government's bold vision of water for all agenda. Within the urban space, from 2017, a number of interventions are being undertaken by government. Currently, eight of such interventions have commenced and are at various stages of implementation. In the Upper East region, the water supply project 
uh, which has a phase one at 92 uh, percent, has also the phase two at 67 percent. The overall progress is ensured so that by the end of August, we would have finished with the phase one and then to be later commissioned. In the northern region, the Tamale water supply, ND water supply projects are being undertaken. The Tamale water supply project involves the construction of a new water treatment system from the white volta. We all know we take the intake now from Dalon. We are going to change that so that the quantum of water produced will be more. Tamale currently has a 30,000 uh, uh, cubic meters per day system. We are moving it to 135 thousand cubic meters per day to meet the water demand for the year 2040. The estimated cost of the project is 223 million and expected to benefit an estimated 792,000 people. Currently, the development phase is completed. Mishes ABP consultant has engaged as, the, as engaged as a supervisor engineer for the project. They finished with their value for money and I'm sure the contractors will be moving to site very soon. With the Yendi Water Project, it involves the construction of a new water treatment plant, and it will be the first one in Yendi, and it will be taken from the, the water source will be taken from the Oti River. The estimated cost is 30 million, expected to serve a population of 133,000. Currently, the consultant has finally submitted the design for review. In the Savannah region, the Damango water project, also a first, is the construction of a new water system and the rehabilitation of the existing water supply system with a capacity of 9,000 cubic meters a day. This is aimed at meeting the water demand up to the year 2040 for Damango and the communities along the main road from Yape to Damango. It is estimated at $49 million to serve 68,684 um, uh, people. In the Bono region, we have the Wenchu Water Project, which involves the capacity of 10,700 cubic meters per day. And also, we are going to rehabilitate the existing ground system uh, water to meet the current and future water requirements of the people up to the year 2045. The estimated cost of the project is 30 million, as I've said, and is expected to serve 101,870 uh, people within Wenchi and its environs. The value for money has been done, completed, and the contractors are moving to site. The Sunyani water supply, which is still in the Bono region, will serve 405,000 people within the Sunyani township and its environs. It's also going through value for money, and the cost is 130,000 $130 million. In the Volta region, Keta Water Supply Project is being undertaken. In fact, the contractors are on site, and they are to produce 35,000 metric uh, cube per day, and re will also rehabilitate the plant, existing plant, and restore it to its installed cap capacity of 7,200 cubic meters per day. All these are to meet the current and future water requirements of the people up to the year 2030. And the new policy is to always serve the villages and towns en route as we uh, lay the pipelines to make sure water is supplied to both rural and urban communities. In the western region, we have the Sekendi Water, Sekendi Takradi Water Project, which is also being undertaken. This will provide um, water to 1.4 million people at a cost of 70 million euro, and it is to take us to the year 2040. We also know that the Ghana Water has taken, Ghana Water Company has taken initiatives to make sure the people of Accra and Kumasi, starting with that, to move to the other capitals, to make sure that the old pipes that were laid 55 years ago are gradually re replaced and this is a laudable initiative. There is the funding, $54 million, which has been secured to also complete works uh, regarding the laying of water distribution lines in low-income communities, especially within the Gamma, and replicate same in the Kumase 
uh, area. The replacement of old transmission pipelines is, uh, um, like I said, being undertaken, and if I may give one example, is the Bechili in the Pung Katamazo. Do you live there? Pung Katamazo <laughs> municipality to stop water losses from the Pung treatment plants. We all know the non revenue losses that we incur. It used to be about 55%, now it's in the 40s. So we hope to bring it to a negligible level. With rural water, the CEO is here. The following rural projects have been completed and commissioned since our last meeting to improve water supply to people living in rural communities and small towns. We have the Sustainable Rural Water and Sanitation Project. Under this project, 23 small town pipe water systems within 11 regions were constructed for a total population of 325,000. His Excellency, the President of the Republic, Nana Adodanko Ekufuado, symbolically commissioned all the water systems using two areas in Fanseman and uh, uh, this, uh, it, no, not, Yape is different. It's also in another region, but the Awutu Senya, you've all forgotten. Highlight of the project is the introduction of the smart meters and tokens, which allows people to have access to water supply services at any point in time as long as the system is running and they have credit on their tokens. Unlike the old systems where people have to rely on the availability of vendors to have access to the pipe water system. This uh, smart metering system is so good that it's going to be adopted by Ghana Water for all its standing pipes. And this will invariably give people access to water 24 seven. Because if it's being manned by someone and the person says, I'm asleep, you cannot force him or her to get up and give you water. But this one, you use your token, you attach it to the meter and the water will flow. If you need one bucket, you can get it. If you need 10 buckets, you can get it. So long as you have um, credits on your token. I've just seen the deputy minister designate my dear, we love you so much for joining us. Another innovation is the introduction of solar pumps at the Naleregu water supply system to reduce operational costs. As I speak, we have systems that owe up to a total of about 40 million Ghana cities in the rural areas and the small towns. The solar pumps giving us solar energy will make sure we save costs on these. So far, 35 solar energy systems have been installed in the Ahafu, Bono, Northeast, Northern, Savannah, Central, Western North, Upper West, and Volta regions. Furthermore, 616 smart taps have been installed in these areas as well. We also have the five town piped water system, and at a cost of $3.78 million. The objective of this project is to expand access to and ensure sustainable water supply and sanitation services in 36 rural and small town communities in the whole municipality, whole west, Agotime Ziope, and South Dai districts. In all, a total of 69,000 people are to benefit from the project. His Excellency the President has commissioned the completed plants at a ceremony at Amejope in the whole West District. This was the only time a certain president had visited the place, meaning Amejope. We applaud His Excellency for going around the country in such an effective way. Strabag Water Supply Project, also known as the phase three of this project, is being implemented in the central Tong, North Tong, Ho West, Adaklu, and Agoti Mezupe districts. His Excellency cut the sword for the project last year. The scope includes the completion of the distribution network in areas which are already connected to transmission mains of the drinking water treatment plant constructed under phase, phases one and two and connected from wire to Gutime. 
The project will benefit about 222,075 people in 183 communities. We also have the Community Water and Sanitation Agency reforms to ensure regular and sustainable water supply services to small towns and rural communities. A number of reforms has been initiated to hand over a number of broken down or suboptimally functioning water systems, which were being managed by communities to the Community Water and Sanitation Agency for management. There's a history to this, but since my time is limited, maybe during question time, this will come up. The free water, the famous free water. His Excellency, the President, Nanado Danko Ekufuadu, is the only president globally by our checks to implement an intervention to supply free water during the COVID-19 pandemic to the citizenry for 15 months. The intervention has received both national and global recognition and must be applauded. We must applaud the boss for his empathy and foresight. The total water bill for the months are reserved. If there's a question, we'll answer that. So I'll, I'll underline that and reserve it for question time if people are interested. Sanitation. We also have the Gamma SUP project, which has provided access to improved toilet facilities to serve over 275,000 people in low-income communities, representing 34,496 households in the greater Accra metropolitan area. This is all in our efforts to end open defecation. This has significantly reduced open defecation rates in the, country, in the region. In fact, we are still validating. At the end of our counting, we might have 40,000 toilets in households in greater Accra. Under the same project, 406 disability-friendly, fit-for-purpose, gender-sensitive institutional sanitation facilities for 260 beneficiary schools have been provided, benefiting over 232,000 school pupils of low-income communities in the Gamma area. And I am particularly elated because the gender consideration, especially to our girl child, it's also very, very uh, laudable. Now the girls have uh, their own private rooms where they can go in and change during those private moments. In addition, construction of a new simplified sewage network, 51 kilometer sewer lines in the Ashaman New Town, and a new wastewater treatment with a capacity of 1,800 cubic meters per day to serve over 4,805 households, a rehabilitation of a defunct sewage treatment facility at TDC quarters are substantially completed. Similarly, the construction of a wastewater treatment plant with a capacity of 1,600 cubic meters per day to serve over 3,100 households in Bankuman is also uh, almost completed. An additional funding totaling 74 million United States dollars has been secured to undertake the construction of 30 household toilets for the greater Kumasi metropolitan area and 12,000 household toilets for the greater Accra metropolitan area. So if we are to add the 12 to the 40, we'll have, George, how many? Your maths, 52,000, yes. And that is really, really a huge figure for our purpose. We have also the project funded by AFDB called the GASLIP, the Greater Accra Sustainable Sanitation Livelihoods Improvement Project. All these projects are geared towards making sure that open defecation is ended, uh, liquid and solid waste management is improved, and it's mainly geared towards the vulnerable and the low income um, communities within the urban, uh, peri-urban areas. And like I say it and trumpet it over uh, the mics, any time I have the opportunity, since 2017, there hasn't been any outbreak of cholera and dysentery. And this is on record. Ghana uh, fact checks, they've checked, and it is true. 
Not that we enjoy having people going through stress, no. We want everybody to be healthy and live a good life. The Greater Accra Sustainable Sanitation and Livelihoods Improvement Project has procured 30 communal waste scape containers and 24 waste collection equipment and handed them over to the beneficiary MMDAs. Additionally, 4,160 household toilets have been completed out of a targeted 5,000. So 52,000 plus five is 57,000. So we are going. We also have another project called the Garrett Project, Ghana Greater Accra Resilient and Integrated Development Project. The ministry under this project is constructing an engineered sanitary landfill and a materials recovery facility in the Ghana West municipality. In addition, a transfer station is being constructed at the Ghana Atomic Energy Commission. Furthermore, the dam site at Abokobi Abloraje is being capped. Fence wall along the Odor drain will be constructed to prevent the dumping of solid waste and liquid waste into the drain. We also have the decommissioning and re-engineering of the Pung and Oti landfill sites. These two happen to be the largest landfill sites in the country. The Ministry of Sanitation and Water Resources initiated the process to, to decommission and re-engineer the existing landfill sites at Pum, Tema, and Oti in Kumasi, Asokwa, to transform and improve the management of municipal waste and also the environmental conditions of the communities where they are located. Currently, work done are 86 percent at Pum and 66 percent at Oti in Kumasi. Provision of infrastructure for solid waste management. Currently, the ministry is collaborating with the private sector, specifically Zoom Lion Company, to provide the necessary infrastructure for solid waste management in the country, in all the 16 uh, regions. We also have the plastic waste policy implementation, which we are collaborating on with the Ministry of Environment, Science, Technology, and Innovation. Very soon, this will be rolled out. In fact, the committee has been said their report will be due in about a week's time. The ministry is also collaborating with the Ministry of Local Government, Decentralization, and Rural Development to develop an action plan to also deal with the other uh, processes involved in waste management, because this all happens within the communities, within the assemblies. So we are all working together as an interministerial level to make sure we succeed in making Ghana clean. We also have um, a waste to energy pilot program, which is currently being undertaken to produce 400 kilowatts of power of energy in the Jankoba, in the Achima Mwabiaja South municipality. And this project is being funded by the German government. And this was also a collaboration with the Mesti ministry. We also have an intervention that we carried out last year. We had to evacuate age-old heaps. And I was hugely surprised that some of these heaps were 100 years old, some were 50, some were 30. In my own village, it was 60 years old. In fact, the chief had to pour libation before they touched it because he said it was a fetish. So we all should endeavor through the communities to make sure we do not litter, we do not pile up waste, we all know waste is money. Those who want to go into recycling and uh, getting compost out of waste, we always welcome them to do that. We, all, we, have, um, we evacuated about 7,802 uh, 7, tons of waste within 72 locations. And we are going to carry on uh, to make sure that the environment is rich of such heaps of waste. We all know we've been talking to you, I think it featured in my first, the other briefing, that we are committed to the establishment of the sanitation, National Sanitation Authority. This is to oversee waste uh, management, be it liquid and uh, solid, so that all players, stakeholders within the sanitation space will be gathered under one roof. In conclusion, Ghana has made strides towards the attainment of the Sustainable Development Goals in Water and Sanitation.
Currently, an Afrobarometer survey findings, SDG scorecard, indicates that about 33% of Ghanaians do have access to household toilets, an increment of 15%, whilst population with access to water has increased by 3%, from 89% to 92%. Let us remain and maintain, remain cautious and maintain a healthy environmental sanitation. Let us conserve treated water as well as protect and preserve our water bodies. I thank you for your attention. God bless us. Thank <laughs> you.